Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a macaw with a pretty ocean background, some tropical flowers, and some tropical foliage around the macaw. I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I am going to go ahead and get started right away. So what I'm doing here, I have my canvas situated vertically. I'm going to mark my horizon line at about a four and a half inch mark from the bottom of the canvas. So I'm just going to take my T-square ruler and a regular pencil drawing, pencil drawing pencil <laughs> and draw a horizontal line across the canvas. I'm using a three quarter inch flat brush brush next and I have two colors on my palette. I have cerulean blue and titanium white. So what I'm doing is I'm going to mix about equal parts of the light blue and the titanium white. So I'm going to be painting the sky first and then I'll do the ocean. So I'm working from the top to the bottom to paint the background. So the sky is the um, equal parts of the white and the blue starting at the top. You can do a little teeny bit more of that light blue at the top, but the idea is to get to the top of the sky to be slightly darker and then have it get lighter as we work our way down the horizon line. So I'm going to gradually add a bit more titanium white to my brush and I'm going to gently blend it down to the horizon line. So you wanna do a relatively thin layer of paint. You don't wanna slap on a really thick layer of paint for the, the background. Um, if your paint is not flowing as much, you can add a teeny bit of water to your brush and that usually helps to get that paint to flow. You want your brush strokes to be smooth and go all the way across the canvas from left to right. So you don't wanna stop in the middle with your brush strokes. And also, so I'm going to start doing the ocean part. So the ocean is right under our um, sky, our horizon line. And I also have the color bright aqua green on my palette. So kind of the same concept. Our ocean's going to be slightly darker at the top and it's going to get gradually lighter as we work our way down. But we don't have to have it be a perfect gradient because there's some darker areas in the ocean and lighter areas. We can even use some of that light blue in there and add, uh, make some of that blue into the ocean. So we kind of want it to be light in the back and um, or dark in the back and get lighter towards the bottom, but we don't have to do it that way. Um, you can kind of just have fun, add some light blue in there and mix your light blue up into your aqua green and grab some white and mix your white up in there. Um, you do wanna just make sure that your strokes are going all the way across the canvas. So we're not doing, we're not really seeing the brush strokes. They're going from one side to the next and you're just blending colors so you're grabbing some of the aqua, grabbing some of the lighter blue, grabbing some of the white and working your way down. You don't wanna over blend it because then it's just gonna all kind of mesh together and be the same color all throughout. But really just kind of have fun, have fun with it. Let your colors do their thing on the canvas. There's really no way you can mess up the water part if you're using those colors and just making sure your brush strokes go all the way across. We are not painting waves or sea foam in this painting. So our ocean is literally going to go all the way to the bottom of the canvas. But what I did was I made sure that the bottom was uh, had a little bit more white. So I'm actually going to freshen up some white on my palette here and then grab some of that white and just add that right there on the bottom so that our bottom part is slightly lighter towards the bottom. And um, you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, but I just wanted to add a little bit of pop of lighter color right there at the bottom and just gently blend it back up into all of those pretty ocean colors. And then if you want, you can add some, uh, I guess, water texture lines or maybe some indication that there's some waves out there, but we're not going into much detail about that. So you can use the tip of your brush with just the titanium white, and you can just do a few left and right horizontal strokes to create the um, some water lines in your ocean. But really, this is a background. Our focus is going to be that parrot. So um, everything in the background is not supposed to be really that much detail.
You'll need to let this completely dry before moving on to the next step because the next step requires us drawing the branch and the parrot. So once your canvas painting is dry, go ahead and grab a pencil. I'm just gonna use a regular pencil to do this. I'm gonna start by drawing the branch that our parrot is sitting on. And I'm doing this lightly, so um, I'm gonna be a little bit harder to see here, but this branch is gonna be going across the bottom of the canvas. It's not exactly a perfectly horizontal line at all. It's kind of, got a little bit of bumps on it, a little bit wavy. You can look at the example in the upper right of what I'm drawing with this branch. And then our parrot here, we're gonna do this kind of shape by shape, um, starting with the body. So the main um, shape of our parrot, the body, is a, a elongated uh, teardrop shape almost. So it's gonna go almost up to that horizon line. So maybe like an inch below the horizon line and then it's gonna curve. So this is the body part. And then it's gonna go down. So you can see that elongated teardrop shape and it goes down to a point just under that branch. So here's our teardrop shape. And then, so you can kind of see that shape that I drew. I'll go ahead and make it slightly darker. And then I'm gonna start doing the head shape by shape. So I'm gonna actually draw a heart. And this heart is not exactly in the very center. It's a little bit offset towards the right on top of our teardrop shape. And the bottom part of the heart does not really go to a point. It kind of just goes flat. But the top part definitely is a heart. So um, look at the size of that heart. It goes a little bit above that horizon line, probably about an inch above that horizon line. And then we're going to go ahead and draw a curved line from the upper right part of the heart down to the top part of our teardrop shape on the left. And that is the top part of the parrot's head. I'm gonna continue by drawing the left wing of our parrot. So the bottom part of that line, I'm gonna start the top part of his wing. So I'm gonna curve up and curve down and it hugs the teardrop shape. And then a wing on the right side, I'm gonna have this wing kind of more towards the front. And so we drew that line that goes on the inside of our teardrop shape and it goes a little bit on the outside right part of our teardrop shape. And then some of the wing goes down below our branch. Uh, we can actually have it go to a little bit of a point but you don't have to do that exactly. And then our beak starts on the right part of our heart, curves down with, to a point and then I'm gonna do the beak, beak. So you can see that top part of the heart, that top right bump of the heart, that is already forming the shape of our beak. So our beak, that curved top part of the beak is the top part of the heart. It curves down and goes to a point. And then we can draw an eye on the right, or on the left part of the heart. So I did a circle and then I did a circle on the inside of that circle for his eye. You can do a little feather texture on the wings, but that's nothing detailed because we're gonna be painting and we don't wanna paint in meticulous details that we drew from the feathers, so we don't need to do that. And then I'm gonna do the bottom part of his beak. So starting at the top middle part of our heart, I'm gonna kind of go diagonal down a little bit. So this bottom piece right here is gonna be the bottom part of his beak. And then just gonna kind of curve it up a little bit. Again, you can look at the finished drawing on the upper right of the screen so you can kind of see where we're going with this. And um, that's it for the basic drawing of our parrot. Um, I always say this when I do the drawings on the paintings, they're only guidelines because when we start painting in, we're allowed to go outside the lines, make new lines. It's really just a blueprint for where we're going with this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start loading my palette with some fresh new color. So I have cadmium red medium hue, primary yellow, and freshen up some of your light blue if you need to. Also, I'll be using a number 
eight. This is the number eight round brush for this. And so I'm actually mixing brown on my palette. So we're gonna be painting that branch next. And we want equal amounts of red and yellow and about equal amounts of the blue. So blue, red, yellow, mix that together and gradually add a little bit more red in there so that our brown gets a little bit warmer, a tad bit more yellow in there. So you mix it and you get brown. So blue, red, and yellow make brown and you'll have to experiment with that. You can add a little bit more red or yellow. Um, and then I like to add just a tad bit of black in there just to darken that brown up. So just a teeny tiny bit, not a lot of black. So that was Mars black and I just grabbed teeny tiny bit on my brush and I just dipped my brush in the water and kind of distribute it into that brown to flow it a little bit. And I got it all on my number eight round brush here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that branch in. So that's that branch that we drew in the very beginning when we did our drawing. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in solid. So it's a flowy branch. The edges are kind of wavy. It's not exactly the same width across. It might get a little bit thin on the right. I'm gonna mix a little bit more red into my brown here. Grabbed a bit more water on my brush just to warm that brown up a little bit. I'm gonna go in there and kind of distribute it into my branch. Fill that up. And then we can always, uh, I recommend waiting for this to dry before doing uh, the texture, the wood texture. And then we want to do some actual branches. So these branches are kind of fun and wavy and tropical like. So I'm just going to have them be a little bit thick on the outer part, but then curve quickly and then get thinner. I'll have this branch kind of curved towards the left. So you can have your branches go in all different directions. You don't have to copy my branches. If you wanna do some branches over on the left, you can. Just keep in mind that that's um, the left part of that branch. I did tropical flowers and some more leaves in that area. Um, but in the upper right part of our painting, I have some branches hanging down. So same concept, the, the thickness starts, it, the base of it starts out thick, it gets thin. These branches are a little bit more curvy. So I'm curving my branches a little bit more. Um, to get them to go to a point, I use more of the tip of the brush. So this number eight round brush is very versatile in the sense that um, the bristles are thick at the base of it but then the tip of the bristles are pretty thin so I can do some thinner strokes with that. I grabbed a little bit of black on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to gently add some texture to our tree knowing that that brown is not dry all the way so that black may mesh a little bit too much with our brown but we can just do some light texture. So I'm just gently brushing that black towards the bottom of the branch a little bit on the, the branches that are or the smaller branches that are sticking out of the main branch. So um, if you load too much black on your brush you can always just wipe it off a little bit. Just be very careful with that black. It spreads super fast. So you only want to load a teeny tiny tip, um, bit on the tip of the brush. We're going to transition to the bird next. So go ahead, rinse all that brown off your brush. I will still be using that number eight round brush for this. And so rinse it all off, dry it, and use your red. So um, there was a little bit of brown in that red and I just kind of stirred it all up. So brown doesn't pop up in my bird. <laughs> so uh, load it in the red and also grab a little bit of titanium white. So I like to grab a teeny tiny bit of white when I'm doing this because that white's going to gently blend with that red to create some color variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of outline my shape first to find the shape that I'm going to be filling in. So if you think of this as um, painting shapes and just filling them in, but having your strokes kind of curve and contour in that shape makes things a little bit simpler. Um, so there's my wing shape. I'm just using the tip of my brush to outline the outer shape of my bird. And there's the bottom part of his tail feather that just kind of sticks down below the branch. And then the right part of his wing, I'll go ahead and outline that part. And then I'll outline 
this part over here. So there's the body and then we have the line that kind of divides where that wing is. Same thing over here because our wing is kind of uh, more towards the front. And so we have our bird pretty much outlined. And then let's see, we don't really need to outline that line that divides his, the lower bar, part of his body from his head, but I did out, outline the part uh, under his beak. So when you have your bird um, outlined, we're gonna start filling him in. So again, I'm gonna utilize the white, I'm double loading the red and the white together and um, kind of brushing it out on the palette so that I can get some variations in color when I fill this in. It's not just solid color book painting in. Um, my strokes are curving and kind of going in the direction of this shape. So right here, my strokes are going curved. Right here, they're curving towards um, in that way. The body part, they're curving and going down. And I can kind of even create some feather texture doing this. So I'm just stroking my brush downwards, making some quick strokes and kind of just stroking them downwards. Same with the wing, so stroking down. Um, you can also utilize that white to create some contrast in areas. So if you want your wing to appear darker, you wouldn't add white to the brush, but if you want the body, the belly part of the bird to be lighter, you can add a bit more white in that area just to get that to stand out. And I'm just filling this in, getting all my ocean um, colors um, covered here. Make sure there's no blue showing through and grabbing just tiny bits of white in there and you can see it kind of already creates that feather texture and we're not trying to make a realism parrot here there's a, the strokes are more expressive than um, realistic and restricted so you can still let loose and um, it doesn't have to be perfect or real and I'm just getting my strokes and they're kind of going downwards. Um, you can define the bottom shape um, just above that branch. And if you accidentally paint over the branch, that's okay. We can always go back over with some more brown and redefine that branch if we need to. Again, a few strokes of white here and there. The white gently blends with the red. And so I'm just filling this bird in. Oh, very important. Um, notice where I left the um where I left it blank. So there's gonna be some pops of yellow and blue. So look at the feathers or the the wings on both sides. I left the bottom part of the wings blank. Um, I filled the, the tail in for the most part, uh, but if you accidentally painted your wings all the way red, that's okay. Um, we can let that red dry and we can go back over and add our yellow and blue later. It's not a big deal. And I'm just gonna do some more pops of white in there. Do some feathers. So the wing on the left, I purposely made it slightly darker um, so it can stand out from the middle part where there's some lighter um, color. So it, it kind of stands out so we can see that's where his wing is. So it created some contrast in that sense, um, but pretty simple for the most part. And we can go ahead and start incorporating some other colors in here. So I'm gonna rinse dry my brush and grab the yellow. So this is the primary yellow color and I'm gonna uh, add the yellow on the on the wings. So both of the wings, the left and the right wing. And I'm just doing the same exact strokes as I did with the red. Just brushing it is okay if that red blends with the yellow a little bit. It might turn orange, but just don't over paint it because then all of a sudden it'll be completely orange. We want it to look yellow for the most part, but bits of orange popping up in there, not a bad idea. That would be fine. And then right here, got a little bit too blended. I may have to wait for that to dry a bit before adding more pops of yellow. Um, I'm going to add some more yellow to the tail feather on the bottom. So just dragging some yellow strokes underneath the branch. And I still left some wing open um, on the right for our blue. So I'll be using that light blue to add those blue um, colors in there. Um, but I'm going to go back and rinse the brush and grab some white. So the left part of our heart that we drew is what I'm painting in next. And so that's his face. And I'm just gonna paint, I'm gonna paint over the eye. If you wanna paint around that circle eye, you are certainly welcome to. But I painted over it, I can still see that circle below. I accidentally had some red 
mix in there, but that's okay. So I can just wipe my brush off quickly and go ahead and um, saturate it more with white so that red doesn't spread. You just want to be really careful, especially if that red is not dry, especially um, when you outline that heart shape. You just don't want to accidentally drag some red in there. Um, you may want to get a, a hair dryer to dry it that real quick if it's super saturated. Um, so the left part of the heart, I just painted white. And then I'm gonna grab my black and I'm gonna do the under part of his beak neck. So that shape that we drew earlier, um, that it goes outside of the heart a little bit. And then I'm just gonna paint that shape in solid black. So that the bottom of his beak, then I'm going to go ahead, rinse, dry, and I'm going to make a cream color on my palette. So I'm grabbing white with a tiny bit of red and a tiny bit of yellow. And so when I mix these lighter colors, if it's too dark, I go to the right of it on my palette and add more white to lighten it. And you just want to keep um, lightening the color until it's kind of a light cream color. So it's white with a little red and a little yellow. And I'm just going to take that cream color and I'm going to paint my beak that color. So that beak shape that we drew earlier. And just be really careful, especially painting right next to that black. Um, you don't want that black to drag into your cream color. So you want to paint as close as possible to it without having that black mix into it. The bottom of that beak goes to a nice point and then the rest of it gets filled in solid. And then I purposely added a bit more white into my cream color and added that over here on the right just for some color variation so that there's pops of lighter color over here. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I don't ever like to paint something one solid the same color. I like to go in and add white or some other tones in there just to make it more fun. So there is our beak and then, so let's wipe off this uh, cream color and I'm gonna go in here with the black and the tip of our beak, so the very tip of that beak has black. So just on the tip, almost like painting a, a triangle right there at the tip and then you could do a line, kind of a diagonal line at the top of it, but that's, um, he's got black right there on the tip of his beak. And then um, if there's any, space kind of still open under his beak. There's a little bit of a gap um, showing. It's kind of hard to see, um, but I'm just going to grab the red here, freshen up the red on my palette, but grabbing that red and just in here, you can kind of see, just going to fill in all that red. So none of our ocean color is showing through right there. And that goes um, for anywhere else on the parrots. Um, besides that gap that I left on his wing on the bottom, um, there shouldn't be any ocean colors still showing through. If there is, you may have to go back over with a second or third coat. But what I'm doing here with the tip of black on the, on the brush, um, a little bit of feather texture, and I slightly outlined that part of the wing, the inner part of the wing, and just touching up the bottom part of his beak. Next, I'm gonna add the blue to his wing. And so rinse, dry, add some more of that light blue to my palette. And still using that number eight round brush. So on both of the wings, we have some blue feathers. So I'm just gonna gently brush that in. And this blue is a very opaque color, so it will give coverage over any dark red I may have um, painted below it. So I'm just gently brushing some blue strokes a little bit down where his tail is um, over here on his right wing. And it's okay if some of that blue is overlapping our yellow a little bit. In fact, it does look nice when it kind of overlaps the yellow. It gives it, makes it look like it blends into each other. And I'm just gonna fill in the rest of our wing with that blue color. I'm gonna grab some white on my brush and kind of brush it out to make it a light blue. And I'm just gonna go in and add some more texture to the bottom part of his tail. 
and a little bit more texture. So that white really brightens that blue up a little bit, um, gives it again, color variation. And I'm just gently brushing that in some of the areas of the blue and creating that feather texture, holding that brush very lightly when I do those strokes. So I'm not pressing super hard. If I pressed hard, the stroke would be um, thicker and brighter, but I'm really pressing very lightly, not a lot of paint on the brush, kind of um, almost dry brush style, the way that I did the strokes on the, um, the parrot to create that feather texture. And I'm just gonna go in with some more red over here on the right, kind of define my shape a little bit more grabbing some more of that yellow. Some more blue and white over here. Extend this shape of the wing down so it lines up with that red. And I'm just gonna keep adding to our feather details. So you can add little um, tiny bit of black to the tip of your brush. Just be very careful with the black. So I use that black to outline the rest of his wing. And I'm just gonna loosely outline this part of his wing, the inner part of it. Very, very loosely. This is not a thick line at all. Maybe the outside part gets outlined just a little bit. Maybe a few black feather line textures on the bottom. And then this part of our wing didn't really line up right, but that's okay. And a few, little bit of outlining on the bottom part of his wing there, a little bit at the top. So just loosely outlining kind of everywhere and adding a few um, black um, feather texture lines, but nothing too crazy. And then I can go in and I didn't want to remix my brown, so I was hoping it was still a little bit wet. So I grabbed a little water on my brush and kind of mixed my brown real quick. Um, but I'm redefining my branch. And this is good, especially if you accidentally painted any of the feathers over the branch, you can just go ahead and redefine your branch again. The eye area is not quite dry yet. So I'm gonna let that white dry a little bit more before I do the eye. I'm gonna go in and add some brighter yellow in here. So to make the yellow bright, I did yellow with white. So when you mix yellow and white together, super bright. I do some strokes of that bright yellow in there. Create some pretty bright contrast in his wings. And I'll do a few pops of yellow over here on his tail. Then I'm gonna rinse dry and load some white on my palette. I'm going to do a bit of highlight on his beak over on the right. So just with the white, painting some curved strokes over here on the right to brighten that part up just a bit. And then I'm gonna be very careful about this, but I'm doing white just on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna do a very, very slight white line right there on the bottom tip of his beak. And then I won't do anything to the bottom part of his beak just yet. But the white part of his face is dry for the most part, so I'm gonna do the eye. So I just loaded my brush, the tip of the brush, in some black, and I'm gonna paint the circle. So I can still see the original drawing. So it's just painting a basic circle about the level of the, the top part of his beak. And then the inner part of this circle, so I'm just gonna actually take this black and do a little mark right there on his beak um, and little feather marks on his eye, just using the leftover black from his eye. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. So this is gonna make gray. If you want to mix black and white together to make a light gray, you can. But I'm gonna fill the inner part of his eye with that light gray color. So we have a black circle on the outer part, very light gray on the inner part. And then I'm just gonna take the black. And you might have to wait for that to dry before doing this if, you're, if that area is getting saturated with paint. But another really small circle on the inner part of that gray. So we have a lot of paint in that area. So you may need to wait for that to dry if it's kind of mushing together. And then 
I'm just going to take that whatever's left on my brush, that dark gray at this point, and just do a few feather marks kind of around the left side of that area for um, some more texture. Then I am going to um, rinse and grab some more white here and touch up this outer part of his face. And very, very, very tiny white dot in the middle of his eye. Again, that may not work if it's too saturated, so you may have to wait for that to dry. And then I'm just taking this white and kind of feathering some more strokes here and there. Um, you can continue to render this further if you want, or you can leave it simplify, sim simplified. And then I'm um, just going to take that white, kind of brighten this top part of his wing here. A little bit too bright so that I'm going to grab some red and kind of go back over that. But for the most part, I'm done with the parrot. I'm going to leave it like this and move on to the leaves. So we don't have green um, in our palette. If you want to, you can grab green paint, but I'm gonna make green here by using the bright aqua green and um, some of the primary yellow, a little bit of that light blue color. And I'm just gonna make a green on my palette. So when I do leaves, I like to mix different tints and shades of green because I don't think the leaves should all be the exact same kind of green. So I like to just have fun on my palette. So green is just blue and yellow, but you can um, we have that aqua and that light blue so we can make different variants of that green. So I'm just going to paint the outer shape of our leaf and fill it in solid. So these are just simplified elongated teardrop shaped leaves and you can see what's happening here with the color variation so when i grab new paint on my palette or new paint on my brush i'm doing different types of green so i even grabbed some red in there um, you just want to be real careful when you add red to your green to not add a lot because then it will turn brown but if you add just a very very tiny amount it'll make your green a little bit warmer, a little bit more natural looking. So these leaves down here have that teeny bit of red in them. And um, so if it turned brown, you gotta start over, just tiny dot of red will work. And I'm just gonna continue to paint these shaped, elongated, pointed leaves kind of all over the place. And again, making them all different types of green. So just having fun on your palette really is the fun part of this. You're just experimenting, making different types of greens. Um, you could even add white into your green to make a lighter tint of that. Um, I suppose you can add a little bit of black in the leaves, but you may wanna be careful with the black because it might turn it a little bit too dark. Um, just like with the red, you wanna add just a tiny dot in there. So I'm just painting them pretty much all over the place. Um, there are leaves over here on the left, but keep in mind that I'm gonna be doing some tropical flowers here. So I'm gonna leave some space and not do too many leaves on the left. And then I'll put some white in my green and you can see what happens, it lightens it up. And then I can paint some leaves and see how that one overlaps that other leaf. It's lighter and brighter, so it stands out. I can even take that light color and just kind of highlight some of the leaves. So just kind of doing like a stroke on one side of the leaves. So just kind of keep painting them all over the place, have fun with it. I'm going to do a palm branch in the upper left corner and I'll be using the same green so just make a random green on your palette using that aqua and the yellow if you want to put a bit of red in there you can upper left part of the corner I know that's cut off just a little bit um, but I painted a um, curved line using the tip of the brush add some water in that green so thin it down a little bit that'll make this a lot easier to do the palm um, frond leaves. And so 
when I do those lines, I'm using the tip of the brush, I'm painting kind of um, fast, doing some pressure on the brush in the middle, and then releasing the pressure on the end so the each leaf of the palm goes to a point. And the stroke happens relatively fast. You can practice it like on the back of your canvas until you feel comfortable doing it. Um, and then I'm just gonna go in here with some white, low, uh, kind of mix that white with that green, get it all mixed together on my brush. Twist my brush. When you twist the brush as you load the paint, it gets that paint right there on the tip of it. And I'm just gonna outline that center line again to brighten that up and just go over some of these uh, strokes, give it some highlight, make it look like um, maybe the light's hitting it in different directions, gives it some pretty color variation and some contrast. So a simple palm frond leaf hanging up in the upper left corner. And I can just go ahead and use the leftover light green on my brush to kind of maybe make, paint some more leaves, maybe give some of these leaves some highlight. Next, I'll be doing the parrot's claws. So those are overlapping our branch and we wanna make a gray on our palette. So uh, gray is made by mixing black and white together. Um, when you make the gray, you wanna gradually add in your black. And so it's kind of a medium gray color until it, um, it gets to the darkness that you want. You don't wanna to add too much black because then it'll just turn black and not gray. So kind of a medium gray color, a little bit of water to help with the flow. You wanna get the paint right there on the tip of the brush. And um, we're just going to paint his claws. So it's kind of a curved teardrop shape that goes to a point. And we're gonna do four of them. So two that are going this way, so curve and go to a point. I'm purposely making different shades of gray here because that's just what I do. I like to do different variants of whatever color I'm using, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. Um, so these two claws, they're curving and they're kind of, they're going the opposite direction of the other two. And then I just wanna make the top part of those curves, make making sure that they are a Above that branch so it looks like they are holding on to that branch and then I'm gonna wipe my brush off here and grab just the black and I'm gonna make the very very end tip of the claws black so using that very tip of that brush I'm just doing black right there and I'm just dragging my brush up so it goes to a point but then I'm dragging it up a little bit and then very detailed here, but I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush and do curved little lines on each of the claws, a little bit of texture. So very simple, it's a small detail in this painting, so you don't have to be too meticulous about it. And then since I have black on my brush, I'm just gonna go in here and do some lines of texture on our branch, just loosely doing black lines all throughout the branch. So you can kind of see that detail that I added. Next, I will be demonstrating how I did the tropical flowers. So these are gonna be basic plumeria type of um, flowers. So again, I'll be using that number eight round brush and I'm going to freshen up some titanium white on my palette. So these flowers, the base color is going to be white and then I'm gonna make kind of a coral peach color using the red and the yellow. So what I'm gonna do first with my number eight round brush and just pure titanium white, nothing else, I'm going to um, paint a basic five petal flower shape. And um, so in the lower left corner of our canvas, I'm gonna paint kind of a small to medium shaped flower. This one's under the branch and it may go off the canvas a little bit. So five petals. Uh, these petals are 
like a teardrop shape, actually more like an oval. So the ovals are each slightly overlapping each other. So very simple. We're not doing too much realistic detail with these flowers. They're only an accent to the painting, not really the focus of the painting. And then I'll do another flower, so another similar size one. This one's going to be overlapping the branch and that leaf. And some of the petals, or at least one of the petals, may have to overlap that bottom flower just a bit. So there's my other five petal flower. The petals kind of go, they don't go to a point, kind of more of a narrow tip to those flowers. Um, rounded but somewhat pointed and then this one's going to be a smaller one also overlapping that branch and so there's our basic um, shape of our flower and then I'm going to make the um, kind of a coral color so I'm going to mix white the little bit of red and grabbing a little bit of yellow so I'm going to use my brush to mix that color and then each of the petals, I'm going to outline the left side of each of the petals. So going around in a clockwise in a radial uh, direction. And so I'm going to pick, basically you just pick one side of each of the plumeria flower petals and you just paint that one side. So I'm just outlining the one side of each of those petals. So it doesn't have to be the left, it could be the right side, it could be the left side, but just pick the same side um, of each of the petals and you go around in a um, radial direction. And then I want to add some more color to these petals. So I just loaded a little bit more yellow in that color, but I'm going to just take that color, so get it a little bit more of a coral color with that yellow and just kind of drag in some of that color. Uh, that white below, it's still kind of wet, so it's slightly blending with it, but I'm just stroking very simply from the center and kind of stroking outwards, just creating some color in that petal. Can maybe use my finger to sort of blend it. Again, not too detailed because these flowers are smaller and kind of an accent to our painting, so we don't have to get too uh, realistic about it. And I'm gonna get some white, Kind of blend that white in with that coral color, blending it outwards, kind of stroking outwards with it. And then I'll re outline these petals too because we kind of lost our outline, but that's okay. So I'm going to go back and re outline them with that red. That outline's got to be slightly darker than the rest of that color so it stands out. That one got really dark. Just picking one side of each of the petal and just curving to outline it. Get this one to kind of stand out a little bit. And then in the center of each of our flowers, I'm going to just do a little red dot. Just blending some of these petals outwards. Adding a bit more of that red color on the outer part of some of the petals. Try not to over blend it because then everything's going to just kind of mush together and be the same color. The last thing that I want to do with this painting is add a few more leaves because I love painting leaves. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm just going to make some more green here, kind of fill out some of the blank areas that I want to add some tropical color to, um, some more greenery. So I wanted to have a few more leaves popping out around these flowers. So that's what I did over here with my green. A few narrow leaves popping behind this flower. Lots of different variations of that green by mixing different colors on the palette. And then in the left part of our ocean, I felt like doing some more leaves. I'm just 
lightly brushing some strokes on those leaves, some fun color variation. But I do want to add a few leaves popping out over on the left because it's kind of a blank area here. So just some floaters. Maybe there's a branch over there that we don't see, but kind of fills that empty space. You don't have to fill all your empty spaces in a painting, but if you feel like you need to add something somewhere just to help balance things out, that's never a bad idea to experiment with that. And okay, my friends, this painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I hope that you enjoy painting a tropical macaw with me. I had a lot of fun with this design. I love tropical and ocean themed paintings. They're one of my favorites to do. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.